Hello, boys and girls. Um, let's see what we do first. How about everybody go and get their scriptures and um, primary songbook if you have one and anything that you might have um, printed from the email that Sister Cotter sent to you. So if you go do that right now, you can push pause if you need to go do that. I just wanted to um, real quick announce a reminder about the primary activity coming up on Saturday, March 27th from 10 to 12. I'm going to be doing a Doctrine and Covenant scavenger hunt and there's going to be lunch and you guys will have the chance to meet your new teachers. So if you don't know them yet, there are some new ones and so that should be really fun. My name is Jessica Goldbranson, so you could call me Sister Goldbranson, and I actually live over in Metlakatla. I am here temporarily while my husband is deployed. He is in the Air Force, and I am staying over here with my mom and dad, who are in the in the ward with you guys, but they live here too because my dad works here. So that is who I am. And so I'm over at the primary and youth in Metlakatla. And um, it is my lucky turn to teach you guys today. So let's see. So I'm gonna quick play a song to try to give you guys a hint on what we're gonna be talking about today. So just one second. And as soon as you... Um, recognize it then you know shout it out to your families because uh, we'll see who can get it first and it'll give you a hint on what we're gonna learn okay Guys, recognize it? Did you guys get it? If you guys said follow the prophet, then that was right. So Let's move on. We are going to be going over sections in Doctrine and Covenants, sections 27 and 28. And I'm going to show you a couple pictures to start out with, all right? Let's see if you guys know who this is. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Do you guys know who that guy is right there. So think about that really quick. And what about this guy? If you guys said Joseph Smith and President Nelson, then you were right. Good job. Okay, so what do you guys, I want you guys to share with your families what prophets do. I want you to think of some of the things that prophets do, okay? So if you need to push pause, go ahead and push pause and share with each other some things that prophets do, all right? All right, so I'm going to show you another picture now that we've talked about what some of the stuff that prophets do. And... See if you guys know what this is. Do you guys see? There's Jesus. And those are the disciples. And he was giving the sacrament to his disciples in this picture. What do you guys think it might be like to take the sacrament with the Savior? What if you guys got to have the bread and water with Jesus? 
What do you guys think that would be like? So I'm going to read um, D and C, section 27, verse 2, starting partway in with, you do it with an eye single to my glory, okay? So if you have your scriptures, you can look that up really quick. Push pause if you need to, and then we're going to read it, okay? But I want to tell you something first real fast. I want you guys to listen for what the Savior wants us to remember when we take the sacrament. All right? Are you got you're listening? Okay. So here's what I'm going to read. You do it with an eye single to my glory, remembering unto the Father my body which was laid down for you, and my blood which was shed for the remission of your sins. Okay? So... Do you know what that means? It means the Savior wants us to remember his body when we take the bread because he died for us so we might be able to return and live with him again. And then he wants us to remember his blood that he shed for us. That means that came out of his body that he shed for us, okay? In the Garden of Gethsemane, so that we can get forgiven for all, be forgiven for all of our sins. We take the sacrament every week so that we can remember Jesus. And he wants us to remember those things. To remember that he um, died and he suffered for us. So, and he did that because he loves all of us. Not just me and not just you. But he loves everybody. All right, so did you guys know, um, do you guys know what it means to take the sacrament with an eye single to God's glory? That's what we're going to talk about. What do you think it means to take a sac the sacrament with an eye single to God's glory? Well, I might be able to help you. Um, think about this, okay? What are some distractions that our eyes or our minds might be focused on during the sacrament, okay? What are some distractions? Like maybe maybe your brother or sister is crying. Maybe someone else's brother or sister is crying. Maybe you're looking at something that's distracting you, okay? I bet you could come up with a lot more ideas than that, though. So what, what do you think we can do to focus our attention on the Savior while we partake of the sacrament? What do you think we can do to remember Jesus when we're taking the sacrament? I want you to share some with your families right now. Some things I think in my, and what I think we can do is to you know, say prayers in our hearts and kind of maybe close our eyes. Maybe just listen to um, starting with the sacrament prayers. Maybe just listen and try to hear maybe what Jesus wants you to know. Okay. How do you guys think it will help you to follow him every day if you do this? So in your emails... The email that Sister Cotter sent you um, to your mom or dad, that I put a printable, a printable book for the sacrament. It's called My Sacrament Book, right here. So I put that in there so you guys can print it out for whoever in your family would like one. And you guys can look at it during sacrament to help you remember Jesus. So there's a picture of Jesus healing. And there's a picture of it says he loves us. He loves all of us. So, and there's a few more pictures in there. And that can help your mind stay focused and help you remember Jesus. All right. So let's move on. I want you guys, while I'm talking, to turn to Doctrine and Covenants, section 27, verses 15 to 18. All right. So I'm going to show you a picture real quick. All right, what is that? If you can read, right up here, it says the armor of God, okay? So I want you guys to find pieces of armor 
on the picture as I read. Well, actually, not on this picture, but on either, if your parents have their Come Follow Me manuals, then you can look at that picture. Um, but I also put a coloring page with the armor of God in the email. So if you guys want, you can get that and look for the, the pieces of armor on the picture while I read, okay? So verse 15 says, Wherefore lift up your hearts and rejoice, and gird up your loins, and take upon you my whole armor, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, having done all that you may be able to stand. Verse 16, stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That means kind of like tying tight with a belt, all right? And it protects your virtue and chastity. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, which protects your heart and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So that kind of means protecting your feet or wearing shoes, which kind of symbolizes your goals in life. Then it says, which I have sent mine angels to commit unto you. Verse 17, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And verse 18, and take the helmet of salvation. So this protects your head and your mind. And the sword of my spirit, which I will pour out upon you and my word, which I reveal unto you. And be agreed and agreed as touching all things whatsoever ye ask of me, and be faithful until I come, and ye shall be caught up that ye may be that where I am ye shall be also. Amen. <clears throat> so I want you guys to share with your families some of the things that you can do to withstand the temptations around you. So while you're sharing with your families, I want you to kind of say this sentence every time you think of something. We put on God's armor every day by, and then say what you thought of, okay? We put on God's armor every day by, all right? So push pause on this video right now so that you can share with your families what you think of, and then I'll give you some of my ideas. Okay, so here's my, here are some of my ideas that the ways we can put on God's armor. We put on God's armor every day by always being honest. By standing up for the gospel and what's right. Um, being a peacemaker. Having faith in Jesus Christ. Always making... <clears throat> sorry, guys. Always making choices that will keep the spirit with you. Reading scriptures, praying morning and night and in all other opportunities, serving others, paying tithing. Here's an important one, guys. Listening to your mom and dad. And another one, singing primary songs. When you sing primary songs, just like Sister Cotter taught you last week, you can invite angels and the spirit to be with you and keep you safe and protect you. So I want you guys to know that when you guys do these things, how when you're trying to come unto Christ and doing these things by reading your scriptures and being honest and listening to your mom and dad, that is helping you put on the armor of God. All right, so we are going to go. I want you guys to read with your families. Doctrine and Covenants 28 verses 1 through 7 and verse 15. So I want you guys to push pause and read those real quick and then come back. Okay, so hopefully you read those. And I want to teach you guys that everyone on the whole earth, if they want it, can be guided by the Holy Ghost. So everybody can receive the Holy Ghost if they want it. But revelations and commandments for the church, for all of us, will always be given through the prophet. Always be given through the prophet. So, in the verses that you guys read, we learned that Hiram Page 
was claiming, he was telling everybody that he received revelations for the church. And there were a lot of people who were deceived by his claims. That means there were a lot of people who believed him. And um, how would you guys, what would you guys say if Hiram Page or, you know, let's see, what if Donna Cotter came up to you and said that she got revelation and this is what the new commandment was. And this is just for anybody. This is just a silly example. A silly example. So, how would you guys respond to that? The gift of the Holy Ghost is so important. So, if we will listen to the Holy Ghost, He will always help us know when something isn't true or when someone is trying to deceive us or to, like, trick us, okay? Okay. So the Holy Ghost sometimes speaks to us in different ways. So some of the ways that the Holy Ghost might speak to us could be by helping us remember something we learned at home or church right in a situation where we might need it. So right when we need it, we might remember it. That is the Holy Ghost speaking to us. He might help us remember something when by feeling by helping us to feel hope and love in a situation we might be in. So it might be a situation where you don't feel comfortable or um, you might just be nervous, but he can help us feel hope and love. And that is the Holy Ghost talking to us. It's also, he also helps talk to us or speak to us um, by reminding us to pray. So if we think, oh, I need to pray right now. That could be the Holy Ghost reminding you that. Also, sometimes if you're trying to make a hard decision and you guys just can't remember what the thing was you wanted to do or you just get really confused or something like that, that could be the Holy Ghost trying to tell you don't do that, okay? So in my life, the Holy Ghost has guided me by... Um, like my whole body, I'll just like feel a warmth radiating from within. Kind of like Sister Cotter's husband, I'll feel a warm feeling in my heart. And I usually sometimes get goosebumps too. So I'll get goosebumps on my arms and just, I just feel all over. And um, a good example from when this has happened to me before is during fast and testimony meetings. So I'm sure that none of you are scared to get up and bear your testimony, right? Well, if you guessed it, I have always struggled with anxiety and I getting I had a hard time getting up to bear my testimony. I just got so nervous. But even when I really even when I really wanted to get up, I would be just so nervous. And so, you know what the Holy Ghost did? The Holy Ghost would nudge me, kind of like poke me, not not physically, but he would just, you know, tell me I needed to get up by giving me that warm feeling in my heart. And I'd get goosebumps too. And so also, sometimes my heart would be beating really fast, but that just also told me that I really needed to get up. So, do you want to know why the Spirit might tell us to get up sometimes like that? It might be because... There's something that we can say in our testimony that someone else really needs to hear because they could either be sad or having a hard time and they really needed to hear what you were going to say. And Jesus knew that. So the Holy Ghost was trying to help you get up. So we also get stronger in our testimonies and grow when we go up and bear our testimony. You want to hear one of my favorite scriptures? So the scripture I really love, and it says, Nevertheless, ye are blessed, for the testimony which ye have borne is recorded in heaven for the angels to look upon, and they rejoice over you, and your sins are forgiven you. So you guys, your sins can be forgiven you when you bear your testimony. I thought that was so cool. That is in Doctrine and Covenants 62, verse 3. So... You guys, I know that this is true. I know the Holy Ghost will help guide us when we need it. I know that our prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, 
leads our church today. He is the one that is called of God right now, and we should listen to him. He's the only one who can receive revelation and new commandments from the Lord for the church. And I want you guys to know that. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And before you go, I have a couple other things to tell you. So in the email that I put with Sister, that Sister Cotter sent, I also put a little fun craft where you guys can make a little mobile like that hangs from your ceiling or hangs from something that will remind you, remind you that Jesus leads the prophet and the prophet leads the church. So, and here is, is a challenge for the week I want you guys to remember. So I want you guys to practice putting on the whole armor of God this week by choosing one area that might be a little challenging for you and working on it for the next week. If you need help choosing something to work on, you might ask your mom and dad for some ideas. And lastly, I thought it would be really fun to include a link for a song called Gethsemane. And I recorded this a few years ago for um, my other primary when I was the music leader. And I did the sign language for it. So if you guys want to learn the sign language for Gethsemane, it's a very simple version and it's a lot of fun. So if you want to do that, then you can ask your mom and dads to put it on. And that can be a great Sunday activity. So I was so fun teaching you guys and I had fun um, with this lesson and I hope that it can help you guys in your lives and teach you that you can feel the spirit by in different ways and that the prophet is the only one that is leading our church today. He is the one that gives us revelation from Jesus. Whatever Jesus wants us to know, the prophet will tell us if it's something important. So anyways, and once again, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.